Honestly, I think it's a fantastic car. Seeing such a model in good condition is hard to find nowadays. If I were to have this, I would take such good care of it. Person, it's fantastic to hear. Uh, what do you got to say? Honestly, same here. I love the model and everything about it. My wife has been begging me to get a car that we can cruise in. After seeing the pictures of this car, now in person, I don't want anything else. It's magnificent to hear such words being spoken about my precious car here. How about you? All right, after seeing this car, like, it's, not, it's nothing special. We probably got terrible mileage, and I can honestly find a better looking car than this. And I, I can't imagine the amount of pollution this car gives out. How could you say such a thing? This car is a rare collectible. This sounds like a play from Shakespeare. I don't care what it sounds like. Wait, who's Shakespeare? William Shakespeare was born on April 23rd, 1564. He was born under his parents, who were John Shakespeare and Mary Arden. His father, John Shakespeare, worked as a glove maker. The town that the family took home again was the town of Stratford. His father held an official position in the town. With William's father having such a high status in town, Shakespeare was able to attend school. The school was called Stratford Grammar School, and here he was taught how to read and write. When William was just 18, he married a 26-year-old woman named Anne Hathaway. She was already pregnant at the time. Their first daughter, Susanna, was born in 1583, and two years later, Hathaway gave birth to the twins, Hannah and Judith. In 1592, the first records of Shakespeare's whereabouts after the lost years were documented. The document shows him as a founding member of the Lord Chamberlain's Men, as a company known for acting. By 1599, Shakespeare built the Globe Theater along the Thames River. During this time with the company, he wrote some of his most famous romances, known as The Tempest, The Winter's Tale, and some tragedies, known as Macbeth and King Lear. Over the next two decades, Shakespeare wrote a total of 37 plays. The plays varied from comedies, histories, and tragedies. Researchers believe he died on his birthday in 1616 due to illness, but in reality, his death is unknown. King Lear is one of Shakespeare's most famous tragedies and was written in 1605 to 1606. It is based on a pre-Roman Celtic king from mythology. The name of this king is from a legend named the Lear of Britain. The possibility of writing this play was influenced by the case of Sir Brian Ainsley. His eldest daughter tried to have him declared insane so that she could take his property. What makes it similar is the fact that the younger daughter was trying to defend her father and was successful in doing so. An event that could have also influenced the writing of this play is the true story of William Allen. William was the mayor of London and he was treated very poorly by his three daughters. The reason for this was how he divided his wealth among his three dollars daughters, and that was similar to how King Lear did it. The play shows how unstable the hierarchical system was during Queen Elizabeth's rule. Shakespeare's King Lear demonstrates how vulnerable parents are to their corrupt and dishonest children and their devious acts. We will be performing scene four of act two, where Goneril and Regan pronounce that they do not love King Lear. King Lear has aged to the point where he must step down. After this realization, he decides to split his land into thirds by which daughter loves him the most. Regan and Goneril give heartwarming speeches to their father. They say how much they would give anything for, for their father's love. For the third daughter, Cordelia, she gives a speech that was meant to say she loves him, but because of the way she worded it, it sounded rude and sounded like she didn't care. King Lear, now outraged, exiled Cornelia and decided to go back and forth between Regan and Goneril. Soon, he will realize that they do not actually love him. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my guardians, my depositaries, but kept a reservation to be followed with such a number. What must I come to you? With five and twenty, Regan, said you so? And he speak again, my lord, no more with me. Those wicked creatures yet do look well favored. When others are more wicked, not being the worse, stands in the rank of praise. I'll go with thee, thy fifty yet doth double five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord, what need you five and twenty, ten or five, to follow in a house where twice so many? Have you a command to attend to? What need one? Which scarcely keeps thee warm, but for true need. You heavens give me the patience, patience I need. 
You see me here, you gods, a poor old man. As full of grief as age, wretched in both. It'll be you that stir these daughters' hearts. Against their father, fool me, not so much. To bear it tamely, touch me with noble anger. And let not women's weapons water drops. Stay in my man's cheeks, no, you unnatural hex. I will have such revenges on you both, that all the world shall, I will do such things. What they are yet, I know not, but they shall be. The terrors of the earth, you think I'll weep. No, I'll not weep. I have full cause of weeping, but this heart shall break into a hundred thousand flaws. O oh, ear, I'll weep, O oh, fool, I shall be mad. Exit, you must. You hear him saying, oh, What am I doing? Okay. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. Following the scene, Goneril and Regan continue to talk about their father and his incapabilities. This allows the reader to learn more about the dishonest love between the two daughters and their father. There's also a storm that is happening at the exact same moment, and with this, they are able to end the scene. The theme that is portrayed in this scene of the play is blindness. This theme is prevalent in this case because the king is trying to use his power to overpower his daughters in the belief that they actually love him. In reality, the daughters are just trying to use him to get land and money and don't really love him. This just shows the corruption in the family that is also prevalent during the ruling of Queen Elizabeth in her time of reign with the royal family. Another theme that is portrayed in this story is the idea that lessons can be learned from mistakes. The character that points this out the best is King Lear himself. At the beginning of the play, we learn that King Lear's decision to give his land to the two daughters named Goneril and Regan put not only the family into chaos, but Britain as a whole. Throughout the play, King Lear starts to realize his foolishness. Some examples of this realization are the storm that ensues on Britain and his realization of his evil daughter's acts. Though what makes this a tragedy is the fact that he realizes this just too late and falls to death in the end. So a professional assessment, according to Philip D. Collington, an English professor at the University of Michigan, he quotes, In King Lear, every scapegoating, every cleansing in blood, is fraught with insoluble contradiction. Something, someone, must die for something else to be born with peace. This assessment summarizes the principle of cause and effect. Something must be given in order to be received. And if you think about it, King Lear thought that with his daughter's love, he would be able to give them land. But without that actually existing, he realized that it was all just a lie and it was just corrupted. In my opinion, I feel that the play holds many values of trust and corruption. Uh, that corruption comes from wealth. Compared to many other works of Shakespeare that I've read, such as Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet, there also seems to be this theme of royalty that plays into effect. As a reader, we're given an insider look into the royal disputes that these plays have to offer. Of the play itself, of King Lear, I feel that it had a great start. It, everything from the first dispute of the king and his three daughters, um, I feel like it just really kicked off the play. Um, had a lot of power of driving it, but throughout the play, I feel like it, like my attendance towards the actual play started to waver, um, whether that was because of sleep or whatever. But it was one of those things. I just feel like it kind of started to die out after like Act Two, um, especially the end when uh, King Lear starts to learn, "Hey, uh, my daughters are uh, they have something else plotted in mind," and now we get to watch King Lear wither away uh, as we reach the end to his eventual death. Um, but I feel like reading this is an experience that I'll definitely appreciate. Um, no matter what other thing I decide to read later. It's just Shakespeare's writings have a lot of power behind them. And each one has a different meaning. But it also gives us a look into the historical context of what Shakespeare uh, lived in. Um, have I have not read it, as King Lear says, nothing can come from nothing. So in other words, I would get nothing as a grade. 